gentleman's back. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from Pennsylvania, Ms. Lee. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you so much, Ms. Dixon, for your testimony. Uh, on the last panel, I discussed and we discussed my time at the state legislature in Pennsylvania, uh, where we heard intimate struggles of Americans who, that they faced throughout the pandemic. Uh, they had to, often had to choose whether to pay their rent or their child care, as we know. And we also know that these conditions are unacceptable. Ms. Dixon, I understand all states approach unemployment, unemployment differently. Based on your research, is there an ideal state system we could learn from here in Congress? So rather than an ideal state system, the thing that Congress could do is create a universal baseline that is federal standards that every state has to meet. Right now, depending on the state that you happen to be unemployed in, you may receive a benefit as low as $235 a week as the maximum, or you may receive uh, eligibility for as low as 12 weeks of payment, as opposed to 26 weeks in other states. And so that, that doesn't make any sense that we would have this patchwork of programs if we really want to make sure and we're serious about coming through for unemployed workers when they need us the most. And so having a baseline of standards where there's a minimum 26 weeks that all states have to pay, where there are minimum number of uh, a dollar amount that fits what the state's economy is, that there is a minimum set of eligibility standards that fits all workers. We need that, and we need that crucially. We also need an extended benefits program that turns on automatically and just triggers on when there's a crisis so that we're not, workers are not waiting for congressional action, but they can rely on their programs to just spring into action. Thank you. Uh, we talked about uh, how some different workers or different people were uh, more benefited more from some of these programs. Could you elaborate on the disparate impact the pandemic had on communities of color where you shared, that you shared in your testimony? Yes, so our labor market is very stratified. And by stratified, I mean that women make up the largest proportion of low wage workers and people of color also. And those jobs were actually really hit hard in this pandemic. And so those folks lost their jobs, but because of history, they also don't have wealth accumulated in savings. And so the fact that these programs were, that Congress took action so quickly and was able to get the money out the door, it meant a lot to folks who did not have savings to rely on and who, for whom this program made the difference between being able to pay rent and stay in their homes. Thank you. Lastly, where would, where would we have been without these programs? In other words, what would have happened to the millions of individuals who relied on these programs during the pandemic without them? We would have had incredible child poverty and a tsunami of evictions and many other ills that we were able to avoid. And that was really great for children, for families and communities. And Congress really came through for working people in this program. And it is something that we will feel the positive effects of for generations. When families are in poverty, it's very hard on children. It's hard on the mental health of, of parents if they don't have income. And so there is a payoff beyond just the actual um, monetary amount that happens in families that we will be reaping the benefits of for generations to come. Thank you for your testimony and for your answers. Uh, with that, I yield back. The gentlelady yields.